UFO one. <laughs> I am the UFO astronaut, and I take it dead serious, and I'm an incredible a genius at analyzing what you can see, and how it's going to look if it is there to see, and what stuff is. So I work incredibly hard at that. I do the MUFON conference uh, every two or three years, and they love me. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, my take on it is, I've already said, uh, there's a tree of planets out there that got life on it, at least, and there's um, billions or hundreds of billions with very advanced evolutionary strength, and I would guess there's billions that are doing interstellar travel. My own interpretation <clears throat> of the evidence is it hasn't been here yet. Now, I'm very careful about saying my interpretation. I wasn't there for that abduction. I wasn't there for this. So I'm careful to say my experience and my interpretation, I have to <coughs> But, like I said, both my guests me. Now and then, they love what I got to offer them. I am so serious about the fact that it's everywhere out there. But I'm so serious, it might be coming a super expert on how to look for it and what you can see <clears throat> and the interpretation of those things that you can see. And so um, the fact that I take that so serious is the UFO people for me. Even though I disagree in some ways from them because I have to be an evidence-based person. But I'm careful to say the experiences I have. I'm not saying you didn't have it. Now what I'm saying, I'm saying I need to have the experience. <clears throat> now, so SCSA was a, was a well-known one, but it depends now. When I take a video and I'm looking at stuff and it's 100 feet away, the video that gets out there, the reader of that doesn't know how far away the objects were. And a lot of that stuff, they put it at 1,000 miles away. Well, the videos I took of stuff is 40 feet outside, and I know it came from me. If you say it's a thousand miles away, you are into a very significant phenomenon. But it's not a thousand miles. It's right here. <clears throat> I also look at trajectories. Every object I look at, I look at its trajectory to tell me if it came from me. Because if it came from me and no external thing touched it, I can simply trace its velocity back to me. There it goes, it came here. And so the stuff like that, and at times I'll say, that thing came from nowhere. He says, I know why it came from nowhere. If the sun back there, the massive, the massive shuttle is behind it now, it casts a huge shadow, which can't see a shadow. There's no way to see a shadow. There's nothing to shadow. Mm -hmm. Unless you have an object, you can't see the shadow. So the shadow is covering up an object. And then it moves out of the shadow and pop is it came from nowhere. Sure it did. Or it's split off into pieces. Now you got a piece kind of reflecting the surface from the sun. <clears throat> so it looks like it came from nowhere. And so <clears throat> it also understands the orbital mechanics. That's a thousand miles away, but we're flying alongside. We're flying with it. Well, why would they be doing a constant rocket burn forever? The difference in orbital mechanics, if it's that, you know, if it's a hundred miles per long, it's a massive amount of gas you've got to use to stay with it. You're in a different orbit. And if you're out of play with me, but anyway, that's the one kind of thing. And I did, I have done more satellites probably than any human on Earth. I've flown with two satellites that we had on this DSA. And so I studied them. I said, there's a satellite, you know, how do I, how do I study it? How do I see it? When do I see it? And what's the order we can? So when do we get that satellite back? We release it, we close out, we Get it back? What's it look like? The order of mechanics. So I take it in serious in terms of up there. What can you see? And what do you, what's this debris stuff mean? <clears throat> but the debris is fantastic. And so it, it doesn't have sense. I'm not saying. I'm not saying we have a debris. I'm only saying we have evidence. But if you look at uh, SDSX, which jump is first line. And so in the manufacturing of things, the tools fall behind compartments where you can't get them. You say, well, that wrench fell. You've got to go get it. I can't get it. How much of the spacecraft you got to tear apart to get at it? It went back there. So they don't go back there. <clears throat> but the incredible vibrations of the launch, which are not nice. 
So everything is good, and then all of a sudden, you throw out the back of the sink, you have an office, yeah, it's zero G. Hey, you want to bring something out? Shake the hell out of it and pop it in zero G. This is <laughs> You want to get something out? <laughs> it's out. <laughs> but in other words, it's very good to really make it. The uh, point is, you have, a, you have a gallon of milk, milk jug, and in zero G, you put a screw in it. That screw will be out no time. <laughs> so you've got a gallon of milk jug, and you put a screw in the jug. How long does it take to find its way out? There's always some motion. It's not pure. It's not zero G anyway. It's a free fall condition to be physically correct. Yep. We all know this. But you just watch that screw bounce around like grinding motion. It's not grinding motion. But you watch it, it'll come out through the hole. So I'm going to launch. He likes that bouncing around. Zero G? What? If it's going to get out, it gets out. So I challenge this first one. Which I was on, so it came right straight to the factory, so to speak, in terms of the debris. I opened the doors of that day and got its own people coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about washers, nuts, and bolts, I'm talking about whole tools. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah, hey, man, this is slightly embarrassing. <laughs> now, you want to take stuff going now. And of course, the physics is beautiful because it's got its own rotation. And you see the trajectory, unless Newton's second law, something touches it, it's going to go. And by getting in and out of the shadow and other stuff and bumping into other pieces of debris. But anyway, the Home Depot out there. The Home Depot is fine when it's 30 feet away. But I guarantee you, when Home Depot gets 100 or 200 feet away, you got to wash your head big. You know what that is. So, but I watched it go. But it's okay. That's what I'm just saying. That is a quick look at how I, what I do with visible phenomena and how dead serious I take that world to understand what it's going to look like, how you're going to see it, what's going to happen, and what the sources are. <clears throat> now, with every subsequent flight, I did find every single shuttle. I thought I'd challenge you again. But when the shuttle program progressed, it got to my last mission. One single thing. So Kennedy is unbelievably clean. So my the later flights, <coughs> I'm Columbia, there, not one single one. <coughs> not one screw, not one washer. They were totally clean. The first time they were all around you, outside the, the first time they were. Oh. Yeah. The debris. Yeah. Not inside, okay. That's what but yeah. No, they're inside too. <laughs> There's a bunch of shit inside too. Inside's home depot too. <laughs> 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 